states will be comforted to know that for all of the disagreements there are around the world from time to time with, with such a large and powerful nation, the whole world is united behind the American people in their hour of need. Uh, there is enormous sympathy pouring out towards them. In Wellington here, spontaneous bouquets of flowers at the United States Embassy and a huge um, uh, welling up, I think, of of support for, for a nation that is under siege, no question, but it is a powerful and a proud nation. Its flags are flying here in, in, in Wellington, and I think we'll see uh, America emerge from this, and New Zealand and all the other countries of the world who must strike a blow against terrorism permanently if we're to have any sense of peace and contentment as an international community will and must stand behind them. Jim Anderton, Acting Prime thank Minister, you. live from Wellington. Thank you very much indeed. Special church services were held in several parts of New Zealand today so people could pray for the victims and their relatives and friends. About 80 people attended the service at Auckland's Tabernacle Baptist Church. Workers on their lunch breaks and passers-by listened as the pastor called for New Zealanders to share the burden of those suffering. We pray that the hearts be too. We're going to take a break now, but don't go away. We'll be back shortly with reaction from the U.S. Embassy in Wellington, plus more coverage of the tragedy from America. And we pose the question, who's responsible? The entire top of the building just collapsed. You can see the plume of smoke is coming in our direction. They can look deceptively cute. We're getting nervous. But sometimes kids get out of control. Uh-oh, look at this. And then when you can't cope. We've got to do some work. You call in the experts. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. It's the family show we can all relate to because we've all got kids or been kids or want them one day. When mum says, come here, I'm from the other way. Down to Earth Crisis Control. Proudly brought to you by Janola. Susie Cato's Family Confidential. Thursday on 3. There was a time when all you wanted was to be big, strong, and good-looking. Mazda Bounty. Get in. Be moved. With Talkline, you get your monthly home phone line plus your very own $5 talkathon every weekend. Make as many calls as you like and pay no more than $5 each weekend on top of the package price. Only on Telecom's Talkline. I say that they care. When it comes to music, they care. Sometimes they care till 2, 3 in the morning. I was hoping for a kind of a, a bouge. A bouge. No, no, a bouge. Wish. What, what about like a, a doof? Like doof, doof, doof. Kind of bouge. A bouge. Okay, just push this. Give us one, Nate. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Get five litres of cleanup for all your outdoor surfaces absolutely free when you buy eight litres or more of Taubman Sunproof Max Acrylic or All Weather Roof Acrylic. Only from placemakers. Know how? Can do. As a doctor, I don't just see a packet of wheat picks. I see a breakfast full of the good things you need to start the day. Like whole grain wheat, full of natural fibre. Plus B vitamins and carbohydrates for energy. It's low in sugar but with plenty of iron for peak performance. Only a breakfast this well balanced is good enough for the team. Morning, Doc. Hope you're going to eat all those. <laughs> <laughs> I'd only been out of police college two months. This guy held up a service station was hiding in a primary school. He tried to sneak out in a teacher's car, and yeah, I caught him. The New Zealand police need a lot more people to make a difference, like Ross. Phone 0800 New Cops for an information pack. Interfridge, New Zealand's leading importer, distributor and wholesaler of commercial refrigeration equipment. Interfridge, come and see us at our showroom in Great South Road, Penrose. Exactly what you're looking for. Call 0800 Chiller. Leather and lounge clearance. Great deals, discounts and bargains. Be in quick for the best buys. Leather and lounge clearance. 36 months to pay only at Furniture City. Furniture City. At Fintel, we stand for great deals on car insurance. If you think you're paying too much for yours, call 
us now on 0800 Fintel. That's 0800 346 835. Welcome back to this special edition of 3 News. Now, we've just received pictures of the first aircraft to crash into the World Trade Center. The cameraman was filming the emergency services, inspecting a drain, believe it or not, when a low-flying plane catches his attention. The passenger jet explodes into a fireball after it crashes into the tower. As you can see, it left a huge, gaping hole in the top quarter of the building. The U.S. Embassy in Wellington quickly battened down the hatches after today's attacks. Like American embassies all over the world, Wellington's went into siege mode. Reporter Tony Field is there. Good evening, Tony. Evening, Carol. It's really been a day reminiscent of the scenes when Princess Diana died. You'll see behind me the flowers. People have been coming here to the U.S. Embassy all day. Signs of a common grief and mourning. The stars and stripes at half-mast and New Zealand flowers at the embassy's gates. Throughout the day, ordinary New Zealanders came to offer their sympathy, struggling to comprehend what happened. Well, I'm overcome with grief for the American people. I just, um, like everyone, I'm just overcome. I just can't um, understand it. People dying, it's just, it's a horrific, it's just a, it's an attack, it's Pearl Harbor. Armed police join security guards patrolling the grounds. Although no one will say so officially, every American government official is a potential terrorist target. Staff arrive for work clearly stunned by what had happened. Um, it's horrible, I mean, what else can you say? It's, you know, 50,000 people could be dead. Uh, it's just a terrible scene. One U.S. citizen now studying in New Zealand says she feared this would happen. Um, well, I'm a Gulf War veteran, and uh, I worked um, with the Middle East throughout my four years in the military. Uh, this morning, my reaction was, this is my worst nightmare come true. Um, many of the countries in the Middle East declared war on us a long time ago, and I feel like our political leaders really didn't take them very seriously. And today they proved that they were very serious. It kind of hit me at one point that those, that those are people that possibly people I might know or have seen every day on the train or something like that that just, you know, died in a giant heap of rubble, I don't know. The flowers kept coming and for embassy staff, comfort came with them on a dreadful day. Today we've had a national tragedy. Freedom itself was attacked by a faceless coward. The resolve of our great nation is being tested, but make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test. I would like to express my sincere thanks to the government of New Zealand and to all those who have called, or as you see here, have brought flowers to express their sympathy. It's very gratifying to see the strong bonds of friendship between our two countries. Other Americans, moved to tears, brought their own flowers as they struggled with anger and despair. Death is too good. Death is too easy for them. If they could suffer for every life that they took, it wouldn't be enough. Tony, the embassy is the obvious place for people to go for information. What's their latest advice? Well, their advice is that for the time being, most of the services they normally offer to the public have been suspended. For example, uh, visa applications are no longer being processed until further notice. However, the embassy says that any American citizens living here in New Zealand who have an emergency situation can contact the consulate office in Auckland. That number is available through directory services on 018. But the embassy is stressing that anybody who has any concerns or queries about relatives, friends living in the United States please don't phone either the embassy or the consulate office for the time being because all their phone lines are understandably being tied up dealing with this uh, crisis. You've spoken to lots of people coming and going there, obviously, Tony. What's been the general mood? Very sombre mood and really a, a sense of utter disbelief. You know, people are you know, <laughs> struggling to really grasp you know, what has happened, to understand why anybody would do this. Interesting, you know, a number of people have likened this momentous occasion, the same emotions they say they felt when they heard the news in 1963 that uh, US President John Kennedy had been assassinated.
Tony Field from the U.S. Embassy in Wellington. Thank you.